on DAB Plus and on your smart speaker. Ian Collins on Talk Radio. Uh, right back on the phones in just a couple of moments' time. Also, this story at 25 to 3. An independent school has banned teachers from using the words good and bad when describing pupils' behaviour to stop them from feeling guilty. Teachers at Loughborough Amherst School are instead asked to describe children's conduct as skilful or unskillful uh, to take the emotional heat out of managing behaviour problems. Uh, Julian Murphy, the headmaster of the school in Leicestershire for kids aged 4 to 18, said that he'd taken the words skillful and unskillful from Buddhism as a less loaded and more accurate way of describing things. But should kids be told their behaviour is just simply good or bad? Uh, let's debate this. Chris McGovern, chairman of the Campaign for Real Education. Fiona NG is parenting educator and founder of Happy Me Parenting. Afternoon to you both. Chris, uh, is this a good or a bad idea? I think a slightly balmy idea. Look, um, nothing wrong with using the word skillful or unskillful, but they don't mean the same as uh, good and bad. I'm not sure where the headmaster's got his Buddhism from. And this is translation of the Sanskrit or the Pali, and it's not very accurate uh, because Buddhism is full of notions of good and bad. We need to prepare children for the real world and not sort of bow to this woke nonsense of not using offensive language. It's not that offensive to say things are bad and good. Some things are, and they need to be called out for what they are. So yep. we're doing this children no favour by changing the language. And, uh, and what uh, I, uh, I was no at all. We're slightly losing your line there, Chris. We'll rectify that. Let's let's put this to Fiona. Afternoon to you, Fiona. I mean, I would have thought in many respects to be told you're unskilled is actually more more damning in a way than being told that you're bad. Well, I would ask, you know, what what is the benefit of categorising it under good and bad? Because when children have behaviour, it is due to a lack of skill that they have. Um, a lack of skill set and if they were able to have constructive feedback on that then they would know how they could improve and they could see where where their sort of behavior is falling short but if you just say bad what does that mean you know your behavior is bad you know they can't see how they can improve on that if they're just told it's bad but it, i mean if you've thrown a load of stink bombs into a classroom that's bad right unequivocal um well I yes mean, yes but yeah, but with that, it's like, why is the child, you know, throwing stink bombs? What's going on for them? Are they not able to engage? Are they not yeah. able to sit still? Are they not able to focus? There's reasons behind that behavior because no child is deliberately bad. You know, they, they're having problems there that the teachers need to help them with. Yeah. I mean, some kids are just naughty, though, right? I mean, that does happen in kids. I, I would disagree. A, I bit, would disagree. a bit cheeky, a bit mischievous. I mean, everything comes from somewhere, ultimately. It doesn't mean to say there's some kind of underlying malaise or social problem or a problem at home. It could just mean that they're a little bit cheeky and a bit, you know, out of step sometimes. Well, and, and if that's the case, then they need coaching and they need guiding on them. Skills. Or just telling off and told they're bad. Uh, what, what would they learn from that telling off? Well, what, they, they what learn... would they learn from being told they were unskilled if they threw stink bombs in the, in the staff room? Well, because it would be getting to the bottom of why they're doing that. And so if you could get to the bottom of why, then you could coach them through that. You're not going to be able to do that by just labelling them bad. Yeah, there you go, Chris. You need to kind of be a little more analytical when it comes to discipline rather than a catch-all term, good and bad. Yeah, I think, you know, if you're, I taught for 35 years as a head teacher and in the private sector and in the state sector. I think if you ask children about this, they would want to have the words good and bad. They're not the same as saying skillful or unskillful. One of the problems in school today, for example, it's much in the news, is sexual assaults. Now, if there's sexual assault in the school, it should be called out for what it is as being bad. The failure to face up to reality doesn't do the children any good. And it's well intent. Look, I'm not in any way criticizing Fiona's good intentions. I share those. But actually, I think it's a better world for the children to live in if they can face up to some of the realities of it that there are good things and there are bad things you know saying a child is good is also a fine is a fine compliment isn't it but saying you're skillful well you know 
it, it doesn't mean what it's supposed to mean. Bad and good are different from skillful or unskillful. And the headmaster doesn't seem to understand Buddhism, which is a pseudo way of trying yeah. to explain this. It's nonsense. It's not about Buddhism is full of good and bad. So let's get back to some sort of reality. Stop fall into this idea that you know, you've got to try and please children all the time. Children want honesty. They want the truth. If it's bad, call it bad. If it's good, call it good, for heaven's sake. Fiona, my... I was just going to put that Buddhist point to you, Fiona. Are you invoking the, the, the Buddhist spirit in this belief, along with Julian Murphy, the head teacher at this school? Um, no, I'm, I'm not really aware of Buddhism. However, my approach is a peaceful, sort of gentle way of, of you know, parenting and, and you know, being with children. So I can't really comment on this. What do you, well, so what do you base it on then? I mean, if somebody, I was doing maths with my, my little boy last night, he's seven, he did really well. I told him that was, that was good. That's great. I said, that's good. Great. I used all those words. I didn't think of what, what so have I done something bad, Fiona, in saying the word good? No, but what you could do better is you could pull out the qualities that you saw in him that made him good because good. I didn't see any, he was just good. Okay, so, and, and you might say that in certain situations and you're like, look, that's really good. And that could go in one ear out the other. If you said, I saw how focused you were there, I saw how determined and how you really tried hard there, that lands a lot better than just saying good. So would you, I mean, how would you police this though in education? Would you, you know, fire teachers who were caught using the words good and bad? No, I wouldn't. I would pull out the qualities. So like there with, with good and talking to your son and saying, look, I saw these qualities in you, makes him feel really seen and heard and understood by you. And the same with bad, pull out the qualities that you see. I see you having difficulties paying attention. I see you having difficulties sitting in your seat. Then how can I help you? Where, where are you helping a child by saying, you know, you're bad? But you can overanalyze things, can't you? I mean, there's such a point. I mean, you, I, don't, I don't know if you have children yourself, Fiona, but do you do. So, I mean, if, if one of your kids is bad, I mean, do, do you have to go run through a kind of mini counselling session uh, every, every time they do something. If one of them loses their rag, if, you know, Paw Patrol comes on too late, whatever it is that happens that upsets them, kids get the hump sometimes and they react. They're bad. Yeah, and, and I emotionally coach them through that and don't see them through the lens of bad. My daughter the other week, she asked what naughty meant. She'd never heard it. She'd never been called naughty. She, she didn't know that. But I can help her in them situations when she struggles with turning off, you know, the TV or she struggles going to bed. Me calling her bad or naughty isn't helpful. Chris, we need to be more descriptive then. And th that is far more useful to kids to, to have a more embroidered interpretation of their behaviour rather than these catch-all phrases, good and bad. Yeah, I think it's an interesting reflection of where we are in Britain today that we're even having a discussion about whether or not you can use certain words, good and bad are words in common use and children are going to come across them all the time, regardless of what one school might do. I think it's kinder to children to introduce them to reality rather than to sort of disguise reality. I, I don't in any way, you know, uh, criticise Fiona's good intentions in this. Of course, it's, you know, she's probably a great parent, but I believe me, I've taught thousands of children over 35 years. I can bet you last dollar, if you ask children, should we get rid of the word good and bad, they will say, no, we want good and bad. So let's have a bit of democracy. Let's ask mm. the children what they think. And I think they'll be with me on this one. They want to face up to the truths. Oh, and the truths could, are, are good and bad. You could be outvoted, Fiona, on your own policy here by kids themselves. Well, you know, I, I can't speak for children, but I think a child being really seen and being seen for the qualities that they possess and for also understanding, you know, instead of just labelling your bad, mm. understanding what has contributed towards me being bad and help me with that. Do we, do we pun just to extend that then, do we punish kids punish for kids bad behaviour? Do we punish? Well, punish is completely different from discipline. Discipline means to teach. So they need to learn something from that. P punish is when a child feels shamed. They feel, you know, bad. You know, they feel awful about themselves. So there's a complete difference there between, you know. Um, but would you, I mean, if, if a kid is bad or as you would call it, unskilled or whatever interpretation you, you want to put on a certain scenario. How, how do you go about punishing a child? Then? I would look at the skills that they're struggling with and then I would help them with that. So say for instance, if my daughter hit my other daughter, she's obviously maybe struggling with sharing toys. So then I would help her with that. I wouldn't punish her. So there's no such thing as punishment for any kids? 
this discipline and this complete different discipline means to teach. Okay, and I'm not talking about smacking kids or anything like that, but you know, t t a penalty, you take away their treats, they stop watching TV, that kind of thing. Well, Is with that, you've got to ask, what are they going to learn from taking away the sweets or putting them on naughty steps or timeouts? But if you're disciplining them and you're teaching them, then you're teaching them how to handle that situation for next time. Taking sweets, they're not going to learn anything for next time. They're just going to learn, when I behave this way, I get sweets taken off me. Okay. Fiona, thank you. Chris McGovern, thank you. That's Fiona NG, who works in the area of education. And Chris McGovern, you heard there, of course, who is the chairman for the Campaign for Real Education. Fiona's the founder of Happy Me parenting it must be a blast round at fiona's at a kid's party because no one's going to get in trouble are they you can only imagine when the kids have to go around fiona's place for a play date it must be magnificent you can do anything oh it's brilliant we graffitied the entire ass she was loving it she had no problem with it at all she said it was skillful <laughs> a lot of good creativity going on there Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. My little boy, who's three, shouted at me so loud this morning over not having enough milk in his shreddies or his freddies, as he calls them. I want big milk, and it was so loud. I actually think an eardrum was partially perforated in the process. Now I don't know whether I meant to sit down with him and say, "Come on, little man, what's going on? What's happening inside that little mind of yours, where the milk?" From the cows didn't quite hit the right mark. Come on, tell Daddy what's going on. Instead of that, uh, my reaction was a little more robust, and I explained in no uncertain terms that he cannot speak like that. It's very, very bad behaviour. It's not good to talk to Daddy or Mummy like that, and if you do that again, you'll have no treats, and you won't even be able to finish your breakfast you do have. And his reaction to that was to eat his breakfast. So I'm working on the basis of my parenting at that specific moment had completely the desired attempt. On top of that, from two o'clock this afternoon, we sold him on eBay. 0344 499 1000. That'll teach him. It's Talk Radio. Online on DAB.